And the sun is going down, man. The sun is going right. down. It's bedtime for me. <laughs> are you are you ready, bro? I am. Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Uh, this is John, and I am once again joined with uh, joined by Lucas here. How you doing, bud? I'm good. How are you? Doing great, man. Today we're we're uh, chatting a little more about this this game. In the last video, guys, we talked about Minecraft future updates, and in today's video, we're going to talk about Minecraft's past updates and currently what we have in Minecraft and all of our favorite things we enjoy about the game. We've realized in the last couple, we've kind of you know what's the term I want to use here, T? We spoke ill of the game that we actually love yeah <laughs> and, i mean uh, we both love this game it's an amazing game we play it every single day well, at least i play it every single day i literally i I'm, it's my job so. it, yeah it's your job but i mean i i jump on here and play like when we get off of of our our little chat i still play for like another 30 40 minutes <laughs> and then i try to play on the uh the playstation and you know I, i'm gonna go as far as saying from here on out that I don't think I could ever go back to playing on console after being on PC for so long. Not that console yeah. is bad. It's just that the, the controls on a PC are substantially easier yep. to, to manage where that's all I played on before was on the Xbox 360, you know, on the Xbox one. And then now, we, you know, on the switch and everything else, but I, I don't think I can do it anymore. No, hundred percent. I agree. It's uh, I went to bedrock a little bit and on the switch and I just didn't like it that much. But. Yeah. I, not, not my not my favorite thing you know so um I, i'm like i got villagers all staring at me it's kind of creepy like i've got three <laughs> villagers on three levels of blocks and they're all looking down at me like they want to murder my face <laughs> what did you do them? nothing like, like stored up somewhere or something no I, I have a so i have like i don't have a house today i want to build a house okay. and i just have like my i have a couple beds here because they keep stealing my bed i have some chests and they're, they're, it's all slapped up, uh, smack dab next to one of their houses, and some some uh, furnaces and whatnot, like all my random stuff that I have, you know. And they're right. just kind of walking all over my stuff and just staring at me, <laughs> like like I'm going to give them. I don't have an emerald in my hand. Sorry, homie. I have a sword in my hand, but they're all staring at me. It's really, really ir like eerie. Stop it. Stop, stop it. <laughs> anyway, so all the wonderful things we love about this game. There are many. I, I have to say, there are many. Even though there are a lot of things that irk us about this game in its current state, uh, there are yes. a, a million more things that make this game as enjoyable as it is to keep coming back to. No, for sure. I've always enjoyed everything that Mojang gives us. And really, everything that's kind of irked us has happened since Microsoft has kind of taken over, I find. Uh, yeah. I mean, to a certain degree, because uh, I don't remember being upset about things when Microsoft took it over... Um, and it was 4J Studios that was doing the uh, the updates for console. I felt like we we would get like regular like title updates. You know what right. I mean? And um, I I truly adored the fact that they had yet another company uh, in on it to to make sure that we were all happy on console. And I, I really I really appreciated that. <laughs> so I, I do miss but... I do miss the uh, the 4J Studios. Uh, version of 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 doing things but you know uh, bedrock came along and it changed minecraft for what it is today I, i'm not good a, and bad good and bad I, I mean i'm not a big fan of bedrock edition to be honest uh even though java is pretty much bedrock at this point <laughs> right <laughs> you know i don't I, I i'm a fan of what bedrock does it allows everyone kind of includes more people in the minecraft community because a lot of people don't have access to gaming pcs that can handle java edition minecraft to an extent no you're right and they can play it on mobile on their wii's switches whatever they have right right on uh, your tablet so, your computer whatever, whatever i mean your uh your tablet your phone whatever it is you have to to utilize to play the game you can play it it's cross-platform on everything and that's what that's what uh bedrock did for the community was kind of merge everything together right yeah and that's kind of one thing i really like about or like about bedrock is that the it has opened it up to so many more people it would be nice i i don't like the marketplace aspect of it uh because a it's so um what do you want to call it it's like um it's like a little click in school you have to know people to get into it and if you don't have the connections you sit on this wait list forever to actually get accepted into the marketplace right and, and it's it does take a while to get on there yeah, I mean, I have been, I've had an application sin for four years now, trying to get in the marketplace. So. Uh, I think I've, my mind's about the same. Honestly, I think it was, 
I want to say well, we probably did it at the same time as soon as Marketplace started accepting applications. I think you're right. I think it was 2000. You know what? I think it's sooner than that. I think it was 2018. Was it wow. that 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 they started taking applications, and um, it's been about that long. Now, I I so it's not that I dislike Marketplace. I would love it if I was able to actually kind of add my own content to it. I've been wanting to bring my yeah, own maps, of course, to the Marketplace for quite a long time. Right. But I, I wish Java Edition could have that option. I mean. It's essentially free DLC for Mojang. It is. And it would be nice if Java Edition had that option as well, where people who are really good at what they do, coding and developing and making stuff, could make something that the community then wants to play as well, and they can make a profit off of it. So you're telling me, like, make it where where people in Java could also um, access the same games, game versions that you can in uh, in Bedrock? Or just it's an entirely different thing. It's own thing, right? So people in Java, developers can go and um, make their own content to sell in Java Edition Marketplace. So you'd have a lot more reason for a lot of these mod makers to build crazy maps, really. Yeah. And, and I, I mean, I guess to an extent, if you look at it the other way around, how many mods are there for Minecraft? Uh, probably, probably, tens of, probably tens of thousands. Yeah, and if everyone went and decided, hey, I'm just going to go and sell instead on the marketplace. There would be no more free content. There would not, yeah. So I, there is always negatives to it. I just look at it as. I, I think as a whole, I think you're you're right, though. I, I don't think that, that um, it would be too negative of an, of an impact. I think there would still be, a, there's so much of the community that enjoys making stuff for people for free that they don't expect anything in return. But I think what they, what would happen is, we would get a few uh, few of these development houses, I would say we'll call them, that will create like super unique maps because it's not just a mod, right? It wouldn't just be a mod. It would be a, it'd be a map that right. people would have to make. It wouldn't just be a simple mod. Um, and you'd be downloading the map because that's what you're getting in in um, in Marketplace. You're downloading these maps that you have, you can create adventures in and stuff like that. So maybe the map making versions that are free right now, all the free maps you can download in uh, uh, from Curse Forge or wherever else you're going to get your stuff from, uh, those may no longer be free if that were the case. You know what I mean? Right, I could see that. Yeah, for sure. The things in the past that, that kind of were added added to the game that I think that we benefit from every single day, kind of like, you know, when, when they did the, the updates for uh, for the end and they did updates for the villages and stuff like that. I think those are all things that, I mean, ultimately we, we, we whine and complain about a lot of this stuff, but when it comes <laughs> down to it, uh, all those things are super beneficial to the gameplay of the game Oh, to the gameplay. Right. So yeah, absolutely. We, we enjoy that stuff as much as we, we, we want to say well, this could have been done better in this case, or this could have been done better in this case. I think that ultimately all those things are things that we, we still enjoy no matter what, no matter what happens to, uh, to, to the, the updates, how poor they're, they're laid out or how sh- uh, slowly they come across. I think ultimately it's, it's what makes the game fun and yep. it's where, where the enjoyment of the game actually takes place is by having all these things added on all at once um, together. Cause you're not just having a, a small little update and that's all you're getting. You're, you, you have this amalgamation of updates over the years and we have oh, what, for sure. what Minecraft is today. Now, and I can imagine like a new person to the game yeah. loading it up and having, I mean, there's tons of content in the game already. There is, there really is. There's tons of biomes. There's three dimensions. There, there is, I don't even know how many mobs there are now. 50, 60 mobs in the game. I, I was just I was just gonna question you three dim- three dimensions and I forgot about the overworld. <laughs> the overworld dimension. <laughs> the overworld is technically a dimension, right? Yeah, it is technically. <laughs> I guess. We we don't consider that though. It's just the world and then the nether in the end after that. But yeah. it's a dimension technically. Yeah, it's technically a dimension. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you when you when you your regular everyday like go to for this game? What what do you do? Like, say you hop on, what is your first thing you do? Because everybody has their first thing. Like, they'll go hunt around, like, find find a village or find a house or something. Right. I guess my first thing is to find a village. I need need food. So so I guess my very first thing is every freaking animal I see, I'm I'm killing that thing for food. And hopes that I will find. You I know, monster. I know. You but I'm, I'm, I'm hoping that I will find a, a source for um, 
a village <laughs> on the way, but yeah, no, no, I, I agree. No, I, I kill everything too. <laughs> <laughs> you monster. I know I'm a monster too. Because um, yeah. you have to, you have to, you have to survive. That's the whole problem with the the initial go of the game is you have to find anything, any means of being able to to have food. And if you um, you're going to sit around and wait for for wheat to grow, it's going to be a while. Yeah. <laughs> so. It's, Definitely. So sorry, <laughs> sorry, uh, uh, um, little piggies. <laughs> You're gonna be my dinner. <laughs> yeah, my dinner. Just give me You're a bacon. My dinner. Come here, bacon. <laughs> um, but as far as like game goes, I guess my big playthrough with game or Minecraft is I like automation. That's my big thing when it comes to Minecraft. So any new redstone device that gets added, yeah, I get very excited for. I I agree. I love I love automation. The only problem I have with quote unquote automation is that I really like the modded version of automation in a lot of cases. And <laughs> True. That's where I kind of tend to uh, tend to lean towards because I love I love all the variations of what we can do with automation when it comes to uh, when it comes to mods. And I I mean I I'm a huge fan of of modded Minecraft, obviously. But now one thing I kinda like and I I kinda get this too when it comes to making data packs and developing for maps and whatnot is there is something about making something in the vanilla game just trying to like making something as cool or as powerful as like say a mod could be but you've done it with the tools that you've had in the base vanilla game like when it comes to any kind of data pack if you can code it where you don't need any kind of mod to do special events that's a really cool and it makes you feel accomplished almost in a weird way i don't know it's a you're, weird feeling i get you're talking about doing it where you're actually coding the the non-mod mod not yes. doing it in like physical true like vanilla style right minecraft. so that's just when i come from like development kind of uh side of minecraft right because that is also a big part of my minecraft experience is right. developing in it right i mean but, that's that's what you you do <laughs> it's yeah, literally, I mean, literally your we, thing we were talking about this just before we actually started recording any new thing that gets added to minecraft i look at ways on how can i exploit that to make something different in a map or how can i exploit that to do something in a game or whatever okay that makes sense right so something that was kind of shown in the new one point i don't know if it's uh, 1.20.3 are going to come out in 1.21 but they are adding a new tick command which allows you to speed up and slow down game time and i was picturing how many different slow motion kind of mini games you can make in the game oh whereas it's original yeah. a design or whatever the reason they're adding it is supposed to be for debugging and it's like yeah that's great but like it could be for this instead <laughs> right i see what you're saying yeah okay it's like any new mob that gets added to the game i like to first thing i do at it or with it is check out its mbt data does it have something that it tracks does it have something that it uh does at a certain time of day does it have different states something that i can use to modify how it interacts in the world versus hey that thing looks cute <laughs> now speaking of that have you have you messed with anything as far as um, vanilla mods go <laughs> when you're modding these games? Have you messed with anything for any current projects you're you're on right now? Um, I actually I haven't done anything in 1.20 yet because okay. I'm still kind of working with everything in 1.19. But okay. uh, I'm trying to picture or trying to think of anything 1.19 that was added. I mean, anything with um, block displays are freaking amazing, and people have done some incredible incredible things with block block displays okay have you uh seen anything on what is twitter it? what are you talking about block displays now you gotta now you're, you, you're throwing you, me for you a don't you, you don't know block displays what are block displays please please so uh, please please describe these to the audience here. so three entities were added to the game they are block displays item displays and interaction entities okay interaction entities are literally what they sound like if you right click on them they will change something in their mbt data that allows you to detect a right click. So people will add it to like a door and you could lock the door. I made it so that you could lock chests and stuff like that. Oh, um, but why, are... did, why is it called a block display? So that's a different one. So a block display can display a block. So it's like a falling block. You know, like when you have a falling sand block. Sure. It's like that, but it's has the game doesn't tick it at all. So it just exists in the world. It's very efficient. It doesn't like take a lot of load on your uh, PC. Okay. And it can display an, uh, any kind of block. If you can put an item in it, an item display will display any item. If you have custom model data on it, it'll display whatever information you put into it. It'll now display just, it? What do you mean by it display just, it? 
So it a item display, if you put it, you can have it spawn in the world. Yeah. And it will always, if you set it to billboard or something like that, it will always face the player. It doesn't matter where they're looking. So if they're walking behind it, it'll rotate and it'll face Oh, the kind of like a, a floating item, but it always face you. Yes, exactly. I and see what you're saying. Okay, kind of like that they also Kind of like you have uh, on the the the, the um, main map or the the load map for your server. Yeah, like a spawn area or whatever like yeah, that. Yeah. You have like often word billboards, and they will face the player or whatever. But it's all built right into the actual entity now that allows it to do that. I see. But um, you could also so the biggest thing that people are really doing amazing things with these block displays and entity or item displays is you can add animations to them. Okay. So they can actually grow, shrink, change size, change dimensions. Oh. And I, I saw one guy who made a Domino's. I'm going to pop these up on screen if I can find them. Uh, the, they're like a Domino's in Minecraft. So like the guy walks up to this like, I don't know, realistic looking table, sits at it. And then there's like a bunch of dominoes on the table. And you okay. can actually right click on each individual, in individual domino because he's using interaction entities that are really tiny. And then as he right clicks on them, they actually animate and they move a little bit and they pick up and they can slide across the table. They do really cool things. Really? Another guy has done like a portal aspect where I don't know how he did it. I really don't know. It's so <laughs> amazing. But you stand behind it on one side. I'm trying to like show it on my door as well. And you can see inside... Uh, this big empty room and if you walk around the wall it's actually not there so if you walk through this display entity you're now in a completely different area another guy did um where he could like rescale stairs and he could walk up a giant stairs using perspective and there's just so many amazing things that people have done with these new interaction entities that mojane added and they're doing a lot of uh additions for map makers i think maybe to appease us because Kind of like how we were talking about it would be nice to have a marketplace for map makers where people had can share their creativity with others. Yeah. It's kind of allowing them to do that, but for free. Now, you don't, now this doesn't translate to Bedrock? This is just specifically for Java? I don't know. I mean, I, there's the biggest thing with Mojang is they've been trying to do, what's the term they have? They're trying to like make it so that everything they add to Java is also added to Bedrock. Right, right. Like every, it's, cause they're trying to merge the two game types, right? Yeah. Now, they I don't know if they ever did that fully with all of the new commands that are added. I mean, Bedrock just got the execute command, I want to say this past year. I think you're right. And well, I mean, there's always been a, the standard execute command that kind of sucks, but <laughs> like the new update, the 1.13 execute command that got updated on Java. Okay. That was what, 7 years ago? 6 years ago? Yeah, I think you're right. That just got updated this year on um, on bedrock on bedrock really yeah oh, wow. so i don't think bedrock has all the new um commands that they're adding in i don't know if they have all the entities either i mean you still can't even execute with mpt data on bedrock what is M mpt data so mbd uh, nbt data every single entity has mbt data that tracks what kind of uh, what they're doing currently or what their name is or if they have tags if they have items in their hands and you can modify all that in Java Edition just by simply editing their MBT data. You can't really do that in Bedrock. And you can't, like, test for specific entities based on what their MBT data is. Oh. There's also no custom model data in Bedrock Edition. You have to, like, physically add each individual item. You can't, like, add models and use a resource pack. Oh. So there's a, still a lot of limitations in Bedrock, which is why I kind of, like, prefer developing in Java, too. Okay, I see what you're saying. So you're still kind of bound to some of the old old ways the old rules th they in have bedrock in, edition, in bedrock yeah. right now okay i don't i i hope they're gonna kind of bring everything they've added to the game to bedrock because there's been a lot for for map makers and developers okay but at the same time if you knew how to code and you knew how to kind of make the game uh -huh. then you can already do that in bedrock with all of the with a custom add-on essentially okay Wow, that sounds all super exciting <laughs> stuff that I'm never all, gonna use, but it does sound all exciting. super technical. Yeah, I mean, every time they do like the all the technical stuff that I try to do, like in um, in snapshot reviews, I kind of glaze <laughs> over it because I'm like, I don't know what the heck I'm talking about. <laughs> <laughs> That's fair. That's fair. <laughs> so, so I know it's there, and I do mention it, but I'm like, I don't know what this is. I don't think I could speak to it properly. 
<laughs> so, uh, I, whenever so I feel a the technical, I, I kind of like jump over all the blocks I get added to the game, and then I go right to the technical stuff. So, oh, okay, definitely yeah, so, two different kind of uh, players here, I guess. For sure, yeah, I'm definitely. Uh, I like the pretty things. <laughs> 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 uh, it's been a long time since I've actually sat down and played vanilla Minecraft. I mean, this is the first time. Yeah, I tried I've and I couldn't. It. I couldn't. I couldn't do it. I had to switch <laughs> it to freaking uh, to modded. Even and... I guess maybe not vanilla Minecraft, just survival Minecraft. Like I've been developing and making stuff in Minecraft for oh yeah eight years now. So I, you know, if... well, I gotta I gotta set my spawn here. Um, the last time we played at least together, not on like just like a, a map or did like mini games or something like that. Uh, was I think we did one on your server. We did a bunch on your server, actually. And then I made a few videos on my own on your server, and you did a bunch of videos on your own on your server, and we did a bunch, a, a couple together, and they were fun. Um, and then before that, we tried Sky Factory. Remember that? Yes. And it was fun, but the Sky Factory 4, for whatever reason, and I love modded Minecraft. I will never knock modded Minecraft. was so <laughs> tedious. It was That's so, when we played? Or? Yeah, when we played, the, the, they had the... It had the um, what was it? The bonsai trees. You had to mix all the nuts to create yeah. all the different trees. It was so tedious that and the first time consuming, right? The first three episodes was just getting materials in order to build more than what we had. Right. And it was a little, little frustrating, but I mean, other than that, it was, it was fine. Um, I'd, I'd love to do a modded series, like a, a full blown modded series uh, on, in Minecraft. It'd be a lot of fun. I think uh, we've been talking about it and we're thinking we might do a crazy craft in a newer version. I think it would be a lot of fun. Yes. I really do. <laughs> I think it'd be a freaking blast, honestly. It's the technical side of Minecraft. That's kind of everything I get excited for. And I definitely get excited for some vanilla stuff that gets added. But I, I love Ash. the vanilla stuff that gets added. I love the technical stuff that gets added because it, it, it adds a layer for servers that I join yes. <laughs> that make them more interesting, more intriguing because <laughs> you rarely join a server that's modded. You mostly join them modded vanilla, not modded, right. like modded forge modded, you know what I mean? Or fabric modded because they're just too hard to, too hard to secure. Um, people end up with a, a whole lot of griefing and you, yep. end, you end up with a lot of garbage um, to deal with. And it's unfortunate, but that's just the way it kind of pans out. You know, I, I 100% agree. I mean, there's a lot of protection that comes from vanilla-based servers, and you can get protection mods, but it just there's a lot more vanilla servers than there are modded anyways. Oh, for sure. Absolutely. I need some. I think I want to build some. There we go. Some barrels. Build me some barrels. <laughs> so what are your favorite, or what is one of your favorite things that Minecraft ever added, or Mojang ever added? Um... Honestly, probably the, the the variation of villagers. I really hated the original villagers. Yeah, the uh, plain brown coats. Right. I, I wish there was an option, and this goes again takes us back to to uh, modded Minecraft. Um, MCA. You ever played it? Play it before? Minecraft comes alive. No, I haven't. Okay, so what it does is it takes all the characters, all the the villagers, and it gives them a generic name. It has a, a giant pool of names. They're almost all of them are it, it, some some form of Asian name okay. they just happen to be that i don't know if the developer was asian or not um right but they all take on a generic skin from somewhere in the world <laughs> you know so you have okay you have what look like regular minecraft characters and if the game feels a lot less alone because you can interact with the people you can talk to Do them they look like npcs they look like or... npcs yeah okay and you can interact with them you can you can marry them you can make friends with them you can hire them you can ask them to follow you um, you can trade with them. The ones that are tradable, you can still trade with them. They have emotions. They can get sad. Um, they can get happy and, and whatnot. So you can t t talk to them, tell them jokes, um, tell them okay. about your, your daily adventures, and it changes so, their mood. It's really kind of cool. It's more like Sims, I suppose. Right. It adds a lot of life to your world. It really does. And it, for me, I think it's probably one of my favorite mods. The only thing I don't like about that mod in particular is it forces your skin to change. Really? To, yeah, it forces it to be one of their generic skins. And I don't really care for that. I really want to use my skin because I, I put a lot of time and effort in designing it. <laughs> I right. Want, I want to use it. But at, at the same time, it's just, it makes the game feel like you're playing with a, a bunch of friends, even though I have none. So <laughs> <laughs> We're friends. Well, well, we're friends, but we, we rarely get to play. So, because you're, <laughs> you're so busy. <laughs> Valid. Valid. <laughs> 
<laughs> but, uh, yeah, but no, other other than that, I mean, that's probably one of my favorite mods that I wish I wish the villagers took on some other like regular NPC traits or that was an option to do. Like leave it standard villager with the big schnoz or right. and the you know, the crossed arms or make them, you know, uh, uh, be more interactive or you can, you know, ask them to follow you and ask them to do things for you. You can hire them to to build things for you or be guards in the village, which is really cool. Kind of makes me think of uh, the Tectopia mod. I don't know if you ever checked that one out. No, I've never seen that. So it's uh, one made by Tango Tech and I did a series for Beckro Jack. I actually had made a village where you kind of build, a, you can build your own village from scratch and you can assign village houses a certain like type. Okay. And then you can actually hire specific types of villagers to do things in that village. There's teachers. There's like ones that play music at the bar. There's see that's it cool. A whole lifestyle. That, there's that is really cool. It makes it would make the game like it make one player uh, gameplay a lot more exciting. Right. You know, and that's um, how we find ourselves is playing a, a lot of one one v one v or PVE. Right. It is <laughs> a, a lot of us versus the the game itself. I do agree the villager update was a really cool one. I was working, I just made a map for Becro Jack in 1.12. Uh-huh. And I, had, I spawned a bunch of villagers in and you just, there's no variation. It just, you can tell it's old Minecraft because everyone's just brown. Every villager right. is just brown. They don't look like they have any professions. No. But that's just how it used to be. That's how it used to be. It used to be the, the generic villager, little her. And that's all you got out of it. <laughs> I mean, we still just get the air, but... We just get the air. I, I feel like there's a little more character to them now, but that's it's it's the same. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you just got to use a resource pack to make them all actually talk in annoying voices. Oh, yeah. Hard no. Hard pass. <laughs> I don't know if I'd want them. Like, even in the, the MCA, uh, Minecraft Comes Alive, um, it's not. There's no real voices, but you hear them crying though if they're like sad and stuff. Oh, poor guy. Yeah, I know. Like, like some, like they get married too. Like they'll marry each other as well. And uh, if like a spouse gets killed, <laughs> it, it's yeah. it's sad times. It's sad oh, times. And, uh, yeah, I know. <laughs> it's it's a uh, it's a pretty it's a pretty fun mod. I wish they had it for more than just. I think it's one point sixteen point five is the latest version. When they updated the last one before that was one twelve point two. And, you know, oh, wow. a lot of things stuck at 112.2 because that's when they changed the coding for the game to 113, right? Yeah. When they did the A aqu- lot of the original ed- um, really cool mods or they stopped developing after 1.12. Right. Be- because that's when the, what do you call it, the coding changed for the aquatic update. That's when everything changed, actually. That's when um, Bedrock came alive. Is it? Yeah. Bedrock is okay. what Bedrock is what kind of changed everything for the, the Minecraft. Uh, what do you call it? Uh, I'm trying to think. Modded think. community. No, the the console editions. The console oh, editions started to, to to take a dive after that because uh, that's when they started switching everything over. The only one that stayed, I think, was the Xbox 360 edition. They pushed on, uh, pushed on over all the other consoles for whatever reason. I really don't know why. Um, that actually made it to 1.13. Point whatever. <laughs> Uh, and the other ones didn't. That's where they stopped. Maybe you know the answer to this. Did yeah. they, like, what happens if you have a digital, like, a, not a digital, a, a hard copy of Minecraft for console edition? Can you still load it up and play it today? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah, because um, I still have the Xbox 360 edition. Well, I don't know if it works anymore because they just discontinued the Xbox 360 everything, right? Um, just, is it just hard stuck in 1.13 then? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's as far as it got. Same same okay. with the Xbox One edition. I can still play it. As a matter of fact, that's how I got my Epic World off of my Xbox 360. I transferred it to the Xbox One originally because you can do that clean transfer from one one to the other through your Xbox yeah. One account. And then from Xbox One, what I had to do is I had to create a realm and I had to upload it as a realm. Once it's a realm, you can then download the world as a, as a map and then you can convert okay. it to a Java map. That's excessive it's, it's excessive it's a huge process but that's how i was finally able to get it off of console and i was super excited that i could do that right okay yeah so the, the, now now my world lives on <laughs> i can still play <laughs> it to this very day and i'm super excited about that now i'm trying to think of like some of the favorite things that have ever been added to the game and it's hard because everything that gets added to the game is cool in its own way it's all works together to how to make the game better right but there's actually like I love the game. It's 
and a whole, I love the game, but individual things that get added, like I'm trying to go through it all. I Deep th- Dark was really, really cool when they added that because the, it was something they haven't done like a big structure addition in a long time. You mean the, the, the ancient cities down below? Yeah. Is that not Deep Dark? I think it's called, no, the Deep Dark is that mod. That mod is creepy as heck, dude. No, no. I think the Deep Dark is the biome that the city spawned in. Is it, it really? The Deep Dark was a mod in 1.12 that we had in Sky Factory, I think, too. That was the creepiest place because everything was pitch black. A light would only travel, like I think, like one block. And crazy amounts of mobs would, would spawn in. Like an insane amount. Oh, okay. I'm trying to look it up. Yeah, so Deep Dark is the... It's the biome. I mention, is the biome, but deeper and darker maybe is that what you're no the deep just look the deep dark oh, deep dark official feed the beast okay yeah feed the beast that's it ah it's been a while since yes. i played that it's been a long time man it's been a really <laughs> long time yeah it's you, you know the other thing that that i used to love back in the day and it doesn't really you don't really see it today is um a uh, lucky block challenges no we were just talking about this we need to do some of these i think so because i I don't know if they've been done. At least I know they, they have been done, but I know they haven't been done well. Um, I, I won't mention the people that have done them recently because I think that the people try to... They used them up back in the day when everybody loved Lucky Block challenges, but I still think they're relevant because if if they're entertaining enough, I think I think they're fun to watch because I love watching these crazy things happen when somebody pops open a Lucky Block. Villagers get out of my house. Oh, they like the barrels. <laughs> Oh, um, I'm going to have to remove all the barrels. Yeah, I love the uh, randomness from Lucky Blocks. Like You have no idea what's going to pop out of them. And I would actually, I think we should start doing maybe some Lucky Block races, maybe get into some kind of Lucky Block challenges where we have to fight certain mobs with what comes out of them. I think that would be a lot of fun. <laughs> Honestly, it'd be a blast. You know, with like, oh, I didn't bring a freaking axe with me. With my ability to uh, make custom mobs, we could literally have a different custom mob every single time you want to fight mr krabs sure i'll make mr krabs you want to fight homelander from the boys sure it'll be hard but i can make it happen <laughs> oh that would be pretty funny dude and i think it would be really cool because we could bring content that is pretty chaotic in my opinion but also completely custom that would be a lot of fun dude i think it'd be a lot of fun all right uh yeah we're, i think i think it's decided we're gonna do that i think so would you guys enjoy watching that i think you guys would I really yeah, do. Let us, let us know in the comments below. <laughs> let us know in the comments comments below if, if we're wasting our time or if you think that would be a blast. I think it'd be, <laughs> I think it'd be a blast. I have to replace all my uh, barrels with chests. Why? Because the stupid villagers won't leave. Because <laughs> they're all... <laughs> they're all congregating in my house. I got to put... Because a... it's... What, what do they call it? Like a point of interest for the villager or something? Yeah, it is. That's funny. That's another thing that actually I exploited when... Uh, Minecraft did its things that I've used recently. What's that? Um, on a crafty project, I had uh, it was like a one block. So okay. I used the fact that villagers have certain point of interest. Okay. So I had to spawn some villagers in on one island, but then they wanted the villagers to travel back by themselves to the original island. Well, unless I'm going to code a travel path for them and teleport them in each individual way, yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the butt. So instead, I modified their MBT data to say your point of interest is at this coordinate. Oh, and so they made their way that the, way. Yeah, as long as the villager had a bridge to cross, it just automatically made its way there. So it's like pathfinding for villagers. Oh, okay. So it's like a rat trap. Yeah. Or a now mouse I, maze, sorry. I, I really wish Mojang would add pathfinding commands of some sort, like pathfind to this location by this entity. Oh, like specifically that. for entities, so you can tell entities yeah. to, to follow a path. That would be kind of cool because right, you can you program so things much... to walk an area. Yeah, you can make them walk around a circle. You can make, like, guards that are walking up and down a circle. Yeah, because you can have, like, iron golems walk up and down an area, and then they would never leave that hallway or whatever it is that you're trying to get through. Right, and if it's just a pathfind, well, their pathfinding gets, what's what I want to want, overridden when they have a target that they need to attack. So, like, it'd be great for guards because, oh, we're guarding this area, and all of a sudden a zombie walks in front of them. They're like, oh, we got to go fight this guy now, and it'd be perfect. Right. That would be pretty but, cool, actually. Yeah, I don't know. I always try to find like little ways to exploit everything, and it makes me think of like other uh, things that were added. <laughs> it's funny though. Um, a buddy of mine uh, who was works with on the crafty team still he didn't get let go. Sad face. Um, <laughs> he's a big he's a big modder, and he okay. we always joke around. Everything that he adds to his mod that helped with our development for uh-huh. crafty, 
when I was on the team. Yeah. Um, Mojang was always adding to the game. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Right. So like all the we had like custom damage commands. We had custom. Uh, he just showed me or told me about his new tick command that would slow the game down or freeze the game and and then Mojang released the thing yesterday that showed the new stuff so I messaged him I was like dude are you guys like working with Mojang now? <laughs> oh Tyler wishes right I mean he probably has a pocket in or hand in someone's pocket there uh, my watch found Tyler wishes for me for whatever reason I said what? Tyler I have no idea my watch decided to to listen to what I was saying and the the search term for Tyler wishes came up. I'm like, okay, okay, weird. That's freaking odd, dude. My watch listens to me way way more than it should. <laughs> yeah, so I was just walking by bees, and they were a little addition to the game that not many people really thought was useful. I thought it was very random, but it does add a lot of envir like a what do I want like um environment or life to your worlds it does uh so this is the problem i had with with bees it wasn't the bees themselves other than the fact that they're these ginormous bees which look ridiculously silly but it is a make-believe world and i get it okay <laughs> uh it's the fact that they didn't add any other bugs like i get the bees and they added environment but that was the perfect opportunity to to like maybe add particle effects for like fireflies or butterflies or Something else ants. along those lines. Ants, birds. I mean, anything. They're so they're so random, but like in ore spawn, the little ants that kind of spawn from the ants. Uh, ant hills. Uh, ant hills. Yeah. Are so they drop nothing. You use them to travel dimensions, but in a vanilla game of Minecraft, they would just add atmosphere. Ambience. They'd be at atmosphere. atmosphere. Yeah, exactly. Just like these. I don't know why there's frogs in the desert, but there's frogs in the desert here. <laughs> these do they do they <laughs> drop seems anything? Like a, I don't know. That seems like a no. frogs. No, no, no they are only I just killed it. new. Okay. So any new mob. Yeah. Now doesn't drop anything. Essentially they can be used to get new items. So like the frogs. Yeah. Will you have to have the frogs eat a magma cube and it will drop a frog lamp. Oh, is that where you get the frog lamps from? Yeah. And it's really, and I just killed the, the poor f frog. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I have a bunch of magma cubes. Really? Yeah, yeah. So you got to bring the frog bag with you, and then it'll eat oh, the magma cubes and poop out a uh, frog lamp. Oh, okay. I'm going to try that. I am going to definitely was... try that right now. There was another mob that does something similar. You have to use the mob to get the item. Um, what are the new mobs that have been added to the game? Recently? the that What is that sniffer? That sniffer. So the sniffer has to sniff out items. It doesn't yeah, yeah. actually drop it anything. It finds that, that the, the, the flower, whatever, the seeds, seeds whatever. of the you know, ancient they, flowers are totally useless, by the way. Yeah, they really dropped the ball. Like, they could have been such good stuff for those seeds and flowers, and they could have had uses, but no. I mean, it, so again, those that same torch flower, it comes from, um, oh, which mod is it? Is it Botanica? I think it is. Yeah. And that torch flower is used to create mana. Uh, we we don't obviously don't have mana in the game, but it'd been cool if it was a source for either light or uh, creating fire or something along those lines, where it, it had some a little bit of use to it, even if it was a, just a, a a light bit of light, like a three block diameter of light, would have been really right. freaking unique. Because then you got again, you're adding more ambiance to the nighttime gameplay. Because right now, no one wants to be out at night because you're going to get surrounded by mobs, right? So yeah. it'd be cool to see that stuff, though, at night. Fireflies, uh, those little flowers. If all that stuff lit up around the world, it'd be such a beautiful place at night as much as it is during the day that it would make for more uh, more of a reason to be out and about to explore in the evening at night. Yeah, true. I could see that. So I don't know. They it... updated it so like mobs are less likely to spawn at night because they need like a zero block light now. So like, yeah. Having more mobs that could spawn in lower light levels would be kind of cool because like mobs that don't try to attack you anyways yeah that'd be kind of cool too because it seems like we only get our our um aggressive mobs in the at night in the evening right except for strays and and husks they come during the daytime too don't they yeah um actually no i don't think they do actually they only come at night but they'll stay during the day they don't burn are you uh, sure i thought they could spawn in daylight oh i don't have any in my desert so I don't know. Maybe. Oh yeah, probably not then. Yeah, I think they they do come at night, but my desert is is barren, barren of all the mobs. <laughs> <laughs> um, they they do come at night, but I, I have so many freaking iron golems in here that there's no way anything's gonna hurt anybody in here. Uh, 
the nighttime if we had nighttime mobs like like the for instance the wolves we really shouldn't see them during the day because they're more of a nocturnal they're more of exactly so if we saw those in the evening i think that makes more sense but we we see them during the day (laughs) i mean that's that's all we see them and they don't really they don't really sleep or lay down or anything like that they just sit Um, (laughs) like the foxes sleep which is really cool I think that's really a, a really unique thing when you see creatures. I guess that's what the what do you call it is going to end up being like, right? The uh, armadillo is another creature out out and about that we get to interact with. That it's not going to really do much. I hope they add some animation states to it where it like hides in its shell or something. That or... would be cool. I I, I doubt it because they don't they don't make the turtles hide in their shells. You know what I mean? Yeah. I think they're very simplistic when, when it comes were to stuff. Added? Turtles were added with the aquatic update. And then foxes were after turtles then. 14, 14.1 was foxes. So aquatic was 13? 13. 13 was when so everything changed. Maybe they're starting to give animals more animations. I mean, they give the sniffers like sniffing animations. Do they have any other animations? I actually had never seen a sniffer. Uh, the foxes carry things. They'll steal stuff and run away. I've never yeah, seen a sniffer like either other than spawning it in for my my one video so i've never actually ran, ran into one <laughs> i think i don't know if you have to make them grow I think you have to or... dig up their egg don't they do you from, i think you have to like where? go to the ancient <laughs> or the ruins and dig up their egg uh i'm, I'm never gonna find know, these you, ruins. you reviewed this not me i never looked for the ruins though i never like hunted right. for them i just knew that they existed i kind of mocked up a little section that looked like it was ruins and said you go here and you get things <laughs> that's it <laughs> I said it just like that, too. <laughs> just like that? Just like that. Oh, perfect. <laughs> yeah, you're welcome. <laughs> uh, anyway, so the, the I guess the, the main reason why I love this game... Uh, did I ever tell you how I started playing this, this game? No, I don't think so. Okay, so years ago, uh, I had this screen print shop. And one of my graphic designers was a kid just out of high school, right? Just hired him. Somebody asked, asked me if, if I, I'd hire him. And I said, sure, why not? He was, he was, a, he was a good kid. And... Oh, there's none of the magma cubes here. Anyway, so he uh, he asked me one day, um, hey, you ever play this game Minecraft? And I'd heard of it, but I thought it was this 8-bit piece of crap game. I'm like, no, I'm never going to play that dumb game. It's an 8-bit bit <laughs> pile of junk. Why would I ever play that? And uh, not but a few weeks later, uh, Ethan asked me about it. And he was little at the time, you know? This, yeah. So he was like maybe like three or four. He asked me about minecraft about playing minecraft and you must have seen it on on youtube or something i'm not sure where <laughs> and stampy. Uh, <laughs> stampy exactly dan i think it was dan tdm okay and i said uh maybe so then we ended up buying it uh downloaded version on the xbox 360 i believe then and uh he played a bit and i showed him how to play because he didn't understand the controls and stuff because again he was a little kid and i fell in love with the game and that was it <laughs> <laughs> that was it so what it came down to is that th- this game is quite amazing the fact that it could bring so many people of so many age groups together that i, I mean i know a lot of adults that play it uh, only because i'm in the minecraft community not because i know adults here locally that play it like <laughs> I, I know adults that are like, oh yeah i played that with my kids once or twice but that's about it but well, i be- mean a lot of the hermits on the hermitcraft server are all adults are they not they, they are now but they weren't like then they were like maybe in their i mean i guess they were technically adults they were in their 20s uh now well, they're, some of them are not, 40s not, and 50s are they yeah um, who i thought they were all in their 30s no i well, 30s is kind of adult too. But. 30s is adult, but I mean, <laughs> but, but when we first started watching everybody, they, they were all in their 20s. They were kids. Well, there was you know? one. I, I, I was it Tin Tinfoil Chef who passed away. Oh, was it? Uh, one of the hermits passed away, and he was an older an older gentleman. Oh, was he like one of the OGs? I think so. Yeah. Oh, that's unfortunate. But uh, rest then, in peace, Tinfoil Chef. Uh, if that was, was him, it, uh, if it, it was, was him, him, I don't know. I honestly don't know. I'm gonna go with maybe. <laughs> yes, it was. Tinfoil it was. Okay, I, I just had to confirm that. Okay, good. So we're not like making rumors. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, yeah, so he was uh, the older fella. He passed away. Uh, as far as I know, suddenly, I mean, the hermits probably know a lot more than what they share. But about what? About like how he passed away and all that kind of. Oh, stuff. I see what you're saying. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, there's, there's, and then there's like a. We got invited to one server one time called Adults Playing Minecraft or something. Oh like yeah, that. yeah, and yeah. There's a good handful of them yeah. that are forties and fifties. For sure, there's a, there's quite a few on there actually. I think that's yeah, everybody. I, I think everybody on there was was older. I know we talked about having good stuff to say about the game. Yeah. I hate this. Uh, what do you call this stuff? Powdered snow. Oh, I hate powdered snow. I think I that was one of the dumbest mountains. But yeah, no, I hate powdered snow, man. That's like one of the dumbest additions to the game. Uh, yeah, yeah, there there are a few things that they added to the game that are that are still pretty silly that I don't really care for. Uh, yeah. But for the most part, it's it's great fun. I, I I'll probably never really go down into the down to look at the ancient cities very often because they honestly scare the crap out of me. <laughs> so I probably, <laughs> I probably won't do a whole lot of that. Um, that being said, uh, it does make going into caves more enjoyable. Uh, but there are a few things that I just won't do very regularly. Just because, same with the uh, the Nether. I, I love the the Nether update, but I don't go in the Nether very often unless I need materials from there. It's not like right. I go out of my way and go. I'll go to the Nether just for the just heck go of it. Look at the stuff that was added. Yeah, no, 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 I mean, not at we all. We did that for the first when it first released, but that was it. That was all it was for. <laughs> just to go look at everything, and then we're like, okay, I think we're done. I think I think we're 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 gonna call it quits. <laughs> Uh, I'm, I don't need anything else. Yeah, I just if I need to go get blaze powder or wither skulls, uh, hunt around in the uh, nether fortresses or the bastions to get materials. That's as far as I get. Right. I should but probably do more, but no, I don't. When I when they said they were gonna add fluffier snow, I pictured fluffy snow, not snow that you can fall in and get killed. Oh, I know. I mean, you can make some really cool traps with it, which is really neat. Yeah. <laughs> But I don't think but, I, I ever, I don't like the mountains because of that reason. So I don't go exploring the tops of mountains anymore because I've, I've died once or twice. Right. And you freeze to death um, and that's it. You're done. I was kind of picturing or half, like, I mean, it probably would be weird if they did it, but I was half expecting it to be kind of like the um, physics mod. I don't know if you've checked out much of the physics mod, but they add fluffy snow to the mod and you like walk through it and you leave like footprints behind yes yeah yeah I, I've, I've had that mod before um yeah it's it's it makes the game more realistic yeah um and uh it does it does add to uh lifestyle uh changes in the in the game it makes it a lot more fun in all yeah. honesty but yeah that that would be more that would make more sense where you see your feet print and like you leave tracks that would be cool that's because fluffy snow. <laughs> that's fluffy snow because that would kind of especially if you're in a, some kind of a uh, in, in a map where you're trying to steer clear of somebody, um, you can track somebody that way. <laughs> That'd be so good. Right? Uh, it'd, be, uh, it'd be like its own block. It's like a block that you walk on top of, and it would kind of sink down the longer you sat on it or walked on it. Yeah. And after it snowed or something like that, the block just reset itself or whatever. Exactly. I, 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 don't, I don't see a problem with that. <laughs> That'd be fluffy. It'd be fluffy. But no, they, they're talking about quicksand. <laughs> That's yeah. snow, essentially, is what we have here, is what you sink in. And if it's one block, it's fine. You can get your way out. If you're wearing leather boots, too, I believe you can walk across it. Uh, but you have to be conscious enough to wear leather boots when you go hiking through the snow. See, they, they always try to add something to the game that makes something useless in the game a little bit more useful. I guess so, like leather, like leather boots. Yeah. Yeah, leather boots are absolute trash. <laughs> They're like the most useless thing. You throw those away the second you get freaking iron <laughs> <laughs> or chain mail or whatever you can get your hands on. Did I kill the only frog in the area? Oh, that's so heartbreaking. Oh, it's so sad. I want another frog now. Oh, well. I think it's weird that a, a, a frog is going to eat a block of lava. I think it's awfully and strange. And then poop out a light. And then poop out a light. I mean, I guess it's just had some bad gas. Bad gas. It's it's a mega frog. It's God. not sitting well with him. It's a mega frog. Mega frogs eat lava. I eat lava for dinner. That's weird. <laughs> <laughs> there are a lot of weird things from this game, but there are. Uh, you but know, it's a game we love. It is. You know what's cool about the about the newer versions of the game? Before, if you uh, cleared, have you ever cleared? Uh, what do you call it? A map uh, region area. And then gone back and re regenerated it within a map. 
No, I haven't. So what happens is it leaves these giant cut lines where you see like slight sides of mountains like just half eaten. <laughs> They're just gone because I thought it was supposed to like regenerate the like the same way. Well, they, they were they they didn't at first, uh, especially when you switched versions like from the consoles from one console to the other, because okay. the Xbox 360 had such a small map generation area and the xbox right. one had a much larger even though it still had borders it still yeah. had a, a much larger map area and you'd see the original footprint like you can see the border like the cut in the water you can see the cliff then later they started making it i think 1.14 they started doing that transition between uh between maps where they tried to clean it up a little bit but you can still tell because a mountain would end and then there'd be a, a river or there, a mountain would end and there'd be the ocean. You know what I right. mean? So they try to taper it off, but you'd still see the ocean. Now, if you clear a region a, a, a region area and you load back in, it matches it like beautifully. It looks like nothing's ever changed. Right. I know this because I just did it on one of my maps, except for one region area where I wanted to keep my base. And I wanted to update the entire map to 1.20 because it was at 1.16. And it yeah. regenerated it. And then the, the, I'm like, oh, you're going to be able to see the cut lines right here. I'm trying to explain it in the video. And you don't. It's the most beautiful transition. Like, it never existed. <laughs> it's a whole new map, but it's still freaking really cool. So I, I really like the fact that they took the time and effort to make that that transition between uh, region generations uh, cleaner. Especially, like, for servers and stuff. Like, if you block off an area of 5,000 by 5,000 so you can have future updates... Um, right, that makes sense. Right, like you, I think you did that with your server, and then you open up further, um, yep. so people don't explore those areas. Uh, that that regeneration, if you clear that area, it won't look sloppy. They do a lot of uh, future proofing now with the newer versions. That's that's that what they call it, future proofing. I don't know if that's what they call it, but that sounds essentially... sounds wonderful. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, guys, I think we're gonna leave it here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it, Lucas. Thanks for joining, and we'll we'll see you guys in the next one later. Bye.